Hello and welcome to lecture number five uh, in Drugs and Human Behavior. Here in our last lecture, we talked about uh, some basics of navigating the central and peripheral nervous systems and some of their major structures. In this uh, fairly brief lecture, we're going to talk about the overall structure of neurons and the functions of those particular structures. So this is where we're at in uh, the nervous system lectures. We still have neurotransmission and neurotransmitters and receptors. Uh, coming after this. Uh, this will be a relatively quick uh, look at the structure and functions of neurons. So we'll start off by talking about neurons uh, and glial cells. There are two different types of cells throughout the central and peripheral nervous systems. Talk about the major structures of a neuron and then we'll talk about the cellular membrane itself which is of particular importance to how neurons function. So uh, neurons are the basic functional units of the nervous system. Nerves then are bundles of axons of neurons. So when we talk about like a cranial nerve, a facial nerve, um, or optic nerve, etc., it's a bundle of axons of many neurons. Glial cells are the support cells of the nervous system, provide uh, a lot of different critical functions depending on the type of glial cell uh, we're talking about. And so glial cells do things like help clean up the uh, central nervous system. They also help protect the central nervous system. They provide the support structure, uh, the kind of the glue that holds the nervous system together. In fact, glial cell, glial means glue in Latin or something. Um, so there are different types of glial cells, and so we're going to just take a sidetrack and talk about those. In the uh, peripheral nervous systems, sorry, in the central nervous system, we have oligodendrocytes. And the oligodendrocytes uh, send out projections to wrap around uh, the axons of a neuron to create the my uh, myelin sheath. Microglial cells are some of those cells that help um, interact with the neuron and uh, clean up some of uh, what's happening in the synapse, for example. Astrocytes uh, connect to uh, blood vessels and so also interact with the central nervous system uh, and peripheral nervous system, helping to clean up waste products, bring in nutritional products, etc. So these things include maintaining homeostasis, forming the myelin sheath, and providing uh, support and protection for neurons. So in the central nervous system, the oligodendrocytes create the myelin sheath, and in the peripheral nervous system, it's a Schwann cell. And the Schwann cells, each Schwann cell is one segment of the myelin sheath. Whereas you can see in this diagram, the oligodendrocyte uh, is sending out many projections to help cover up uh, that axis. So that gets us then to the major structures of, of the neuron itself. We'll talk about the cell body or soma, uh, axons and dendrites, and we'll talk about each of these individually. But you can see here uh, the cell body is sort of the bulk, bulky part of the neuron. This is the metabolic center. It's where the nucleus is. Uh, the dendrites are the receiving end of the neuron. <clears throat> they branch out in many directions from the body. There's a single axon that exits the cell body, which then sends out many terminal branches and projections at its end, and that axon can be covered by an oligodendrocyte or Schwann cells, depending on um, if it's in the peripheral central nervous system. And we'll talk uh, about neurotransmission and how a, uh, an action potential gets sent down the full length of that axon. So you can see, uh, again, a nice uh, summary of these separate functions. Uh, in the cell body itself is the cytoplasm, it can tell us also the cell nucleus, which contains the cell's DNA. This is where the endoplasmic reticulum is contained, uh, ribosomes that translate genetic codes into proteins, and of course mitochondria, um, where uh, energy is released. The Golgi complex uh, is very important in um, neurons as they uh, modify and package proteins, particularly uh, neurotransmitters, which then can be sent down the full length of the axon to the terminal branches of the neuron, where they would be released by a synaptic vesicle. So a vertebrate motor neuron um, would look something like this. We have the cell nucleus, uh, the axon traveling down to the muscle fiber, being covered by Schwann cells, and then at the uh, muscle fiber, each um, branch of that will uh, intersect with a different muscle fiber, and then that would actually be called a motor unit. Uh, sensory neuron, of course, information is traveling in the opposite direction. Um, very different type of structure. We have sensory endings, say, in the skin. Um, that then travels up 
there's a cell body in between the um, sensory endings and uh, the axon terminals, uh, which in this case would synapse at the spinal cord uh, in a variety of uh, places, and particularly with an interneuron. So the major structures of the cell body, we want to talk about the nucleus. This contains the cellular DNA, which is, of course, particularly important for um, what the neuron is doing. It's usually encoding proteins. We're going to talk a little bit about what is called epigenetics, in which our experiences, things like stress, post-traumatic stress disorder, can alter that um, genetic signaling so that uh, different proteins are made or the cell responds in a different way. And those epigenetic uh, changes can actually be inherited uh, by our offspring. Uh, the mitochondria, of course, is the cell powerhouse. And then finally, the Golgi apparatus modifies and packages proteins. In particular, we're usually talking about neurotransmitters, uh, which are usually sent down the length of an axon uh, to the terminal buttons, where then those um, neurotransmitters are released. The axon, uh, there's usually a single axon. Uh, this is the transmitting end of a neuron. Uh, neurotransmitters are released from the terminal branches or terminal buttons. Some people call them the terminal butons, but I call them buttons. Um, this is where neurotransmitters are released into the synapse. This is the point at which a number of drugs we're going to talk about uh, have their effects. So at those terminal branches or terminal buttons, what we have are a number of receptors, in particular what are called autoreceptors. And those autoreceptors um, shut down neurotransmission, so they stop releasing neurotransmitters. There are also transport proteins, which bring neurotransmitters back into uh, the presynaptic cell. And those are going to be very important for us to understand about how certain drugs work. Um, most, uh, all white matter neurons are um, covered with a myelin sheath. Gray matter neurons are unmyelinated, or oftentimes gray matter is uh, cell bodies. The axons of many neurons are covered with this myelin sheath, and the uh, purpose of this myelin sheath is to speed up the process of neural conduction. We'll talk about that in the next lecture when we talk about neural transmission itself. Uh, finally, synaptic vesicles. These are our sort of membrane sacs which contain neurotransmitters. These synaptic vesicles will then fuse with the cellular membrane at that terminal button and then get released into uh, the synapse. So those synaptic vesicles are a very important part of understanding the process. What happens is uh, when an action potential reaches those terminal buttons, uh, there uh, opens what are called calcium-gated ion channels, uh, or voltage-gated ion channels, sorry, and those um, vesicles fuse with the membrane and then are released into the synapse. That gets us into the dendrites. This is the receiving end of a neuron. This includes uh, dendritic spines, and the dendritic spines are going to be very important for us uh, to talk about in uh, our discussions of depression, in particular, how ketamine um, has been shown to improve uh, depression, in particular, by increasing dendritic spine density. Um, these are specialized, contains for specialized receptors for neurotransmitters. So the dendrites are another important part of understanding this process. Um, those receptors uh, function sort of like a key in a lock. When the neurotransmitter binds with that receptor, it can open or close a lock. These are particularly important for understanding uh, the a number of ways in which drugs work. Uh, so to give you an example, uh, the drug Narcan, or uh, naloxone, is a drug that reverses opioid overdose. If, uh, if somebody overdoses on heroin or fentanyl or one of the other opioids, um, the, what happens is those opioids can bind to a specific receptor site, while the naltrexone, uh, or naloxone, uh, binds to that same receptor, but doesn't cause any action. And so what it does is it immediately reverses the effects of um, those painkillers in causing an overdose. And so it's those on those dendrites where that action is happening. The cell membrane uh, is a semi-perbulum membrane that encloses the neuron. It's composed of a um, phospholipid bilayer, very critical to neurotransmission. It contains different um, ion channels, in particular sodium, uh, channels, potassium channels, uh, sodium potassium pump, uh, etc. So what we have here are these ion channels. This is how neurons uh, function by opening and closing these ion channels and generating an electrical charge um, or electrical differential between the inside and the outside of a neuron. And that's actually how all neurons function. In fact, some of these ion channels 
will include receptor sites for different neurotransmitters. So an important neurotransmitter we'll talk about is a gamma amino butyric acid, or GABA. And GABA can bind to an ionic channel and uh, keep it from opening. So uh, those ion channels open and close to create this electrical charge. Uh, most neurons are just sitting around with what we, <coughs> excuse me, what we call a resting membrane potential of negative 70 millivolts. And that's essentially maintained by um, these ion channels and in this uh, protein complex called the sodium potassium pump. And we're gonna talk a lot more about that process and how it functions in our next lecture. All right, that's it for the basic structures of a neuron. We will talk about neurotransmission in lecture number six.